We need to think of the family as the cell of civilization. You can't have a functioning country, you can't have a functioning society if you don't have functioning families. The social scientists know this. We know this from reason. We don't need special revelation to tell us this. We know this from the sociological data. At the same time, we can turn to the first page of the book of the Bible in Genesis. And what happens? God creates us. He creates us man and male and female. He creates us and then commands and blesses us, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. That's a demand, a sort of divine command and blessing all rolled into one. And multiply, by the way, didn't just mean raise crops. That's right. But it didn't mean not raise That's crops. That's right. It's being that was part of the and multiplied. Yeah, That's exactly right. But it also right. meant having children. That's exactly and right. And two women and two men don't have children. No, it doesn't work. It doesn't so, work. Yeah, and that's the kind of fundamental reality realities that I think a lot of people didn't see in the debate about same-sex marriage that is sort of effectively ended at least for a while with a Supreme Court decision in 2015. But the forces that are attacking the family have continued. And as soon as we, uh, at least legally at the federal level, said, well, the complementary nature of male and female, those don't matter for marriage. The next step, there is no complementary male and female. In fact, that's that's all uh, just sex assigned at birth. It's just a social construct that uh, people have imposed on us. That's how crazy uh, we are in our culture now. That yep. something that was known to every person at every time and place in history is now up for grabs.